Well, hello, Thrive Chapel, and welcome again to the spiritual journey that we're on and we're taking together called What's Next. We're looking at what's next for you, your family, and our community. And we're doing this by developing your life first through the What's Next devotional guide. This is a season of preparation we're entering into to launch our second service at Thrive on Sunday mornings. That starting January 11th of the new year, on Sunday morning we'll have two services, one at 945 and one at 11.15. And we're doing this for stories like this that I want to share with you from a, a husband and a father who came to our very first season, our very first grand opening service, and he said this, We had a great time at service today. Thank you for the opportunity to find Christ again with my family. My family is blessed to find Thrive Chapel. We're looking forward to next Sunday. What this second service will do is allow us the ability to impact more lives as well as creating the opportunity for our volunteers to attend a service after serving in a service, to have a sit one, serve one culture. And really that's an important step for our church to be able to develop and also minister to our volunteer base. So if you would, I'm going to have you turn to your last page, page 17 of your What's Next devotional. We're once again going to look at our next prayer focus. We're doing this each and every week because we want to be reminded again of the vision. Habakkuk says, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. For if it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come and it will not delay. So as we look again at our next prayer focuses, number one, we see that it's sharing our time, it's sharing our faith, it's praying for those four names as often as we can that those four people would receive Christ. Secondly, we're praying that you would serve in your talents and find an area of ministry and register for small groups and become an active part of lifting the second service off the ground. And then thirdly, our prayer focus is how we're sowing our treasure and responding to the invitation that God gives us through our giving. We're going to dig more into some of these prayer focuses with our study today as we look in our week two study of what's next, living God's way. In life usually is a process. Usually it's a journey. And that's what we're going to look at today and how to live God's way on page seven of that even though God makes a promise, that promise comes with a process. So when God speaks this promise and he speaks it to Abraham, at the time, Abraham's wife was barren. They had no children. There was no promise of these future generations because they didn't even have a child at the time. They wanted a child, and for many years, Abraham and Sarah prayed that the Lord would deliver them a child. And after waiting, after praying, after not giving up and having the temptation to, late in life, because of his faith, Abraham and Sarah were given this child, this child of faith, the one that at a hundred years of age, Abraham was granted. The son's name was Isaac, and it became the promise to Abraham's faith. What was next for Abraham was he would give birth to future generations and the land around them and all the people would come from this promised son. I believe we as a church have a similar promise in this great community that we live in, that many more families that live in this area that have not come to know Jesus yet could be blessed from a life with Christ if we'll continue to walk out in faith the promise God has given us that future generations like Abraham would come from our choices of obedience. In Genesis chapter 2, this story goes on to talk about a great test that Abraham would be given. A test that God would give Abraham to see if he would follow God's way for living in God's way. And the gut-wrenching story takes a turn and a twist where Abraham is asked to sacrifice his son. And the question we see in this devotion and scripture is would Abraham trust God as his provider? Or would Abraham rely on himself and his own understanding of what was right and what was good? God asked Abraham, would you give back to me the gift I've given to you? the thing you prize most in life. In other words, would he live with an open hand? Would he live with giving back to God that what was first given to him? I think at times, God asks us the same question. He asks us, will we trust him with what we prize our life on most? He tests us not so much with what we don't have, but what we do have. That everyone and everything that we have in life really belongs to God, and we're just stewarding back to him the things he's first given to us. In Psalms 24, the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's in all and all its fullness. 
that the world and those that dwell within it first belong to him. It's pretty simply stated in our Bibles that we should dwell on the fullness of the world, that he gave us all these things. And, and the reality is working that out is a lot more difficult. It's not quite as easy as it sounds. And inside of your devotion for this week, we've highlighted the words that the life of surrender we live as a Christian is a continual process. It's not a one-time action. So as we close in today's story, we see that Abraham trusted God with his own child, the, the very gift that God first gave him. And when I think of my own salvation story and, and how I came to know the Lord, uh, I first prayed the sinner's prayer when I was 16 and, and went to a church hoping that that church could help develop me. And, and I remember sitting in that service thinking to myself, you know, I'll be a Christian, but I don't want to go to church. Well, four years later, I was 21 years of age, and now I'm in a much more devastated place, a desperate place, a, a really injured place of life. And, and I made the choice at this time that I was going to serve God with whatever I had, and I was looking for a church that would help me take that next step. I found a church that helped to draw me into the story and the spiritual journey that they'd have me to build. And I'm so thankful that that church helped to lay out for me the decision and the choices. And that's what we're trying to do as a church, is provide the avenue for people to come and to experience Christ. So today as we pray, I want us to pray for the lives we're praying for, that they would surrender themselves, that they would give up of themselves in this pursuit of life and begin to experience God and the salvation He has for us. Let's pray here today and believe God for the salvation of the names on your back cover list. God, we thank you for those names you've placed in our heart that we've written upon our books and we're believing for in this six-week devotional study, this spiritual journey we're taking together, God, for what's next in our lives and the lives of our family and those lives we live with in our community. God, help us to reach those people that we're praying for and believing for that will respond to our invitation to come and to hear of your saving grace. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you again. I want to encourage you again in that back cover list. Pray every day you can for those names that you're believing for to come and to hear about Jesus and about the Lord and their life. And then also join us this Sunday as we get into our brand new series. It starts this coming week on the 7th of December called Hope. We're getting into our Christmas season and a brand new time, a brand new series here at Thrive. So I look forward to finding you this coming Sunday morning at Thrive Chapel. God bless you.